morning. Well, it was seven degrees this morning, and now I think it's 20. So, what that means, I can finally play with my ponies. Um, hey, Dunny. What you doing, buddy? Yeah. Let's see what we can do. You can find your halter. You just brought him in. Actually, he trots in by himself on to get a little morning snack. And uh, I have one more horse in here, but he's usually this quiet without a horse in here. I've got a colt over here that's way underweight that's it, uh, just eating hay. So you'll hear some munching going on. Hey, Where's my buddy? Mine's a vet, and she was telling me that a horse broke its neck, which is crazy, because the blanket got half on and half off, uh, and the person didn't have a halter to stop it, and it just kind of got hung on the blanket as it was coming off. I don't know what size this blanket is. It's a big one. I, it came with a, a horse that, a big old horse, let's see. This one is a size, I can't read it, size gigantic. Actually, I think it's about an 82 maybe, something like that. So as you can see, he doesn't have, he's not even tied up. Okay, so you stand there. You get right over here and stand still. Whoops, you're stepping on that. Thank you. Adjust the camera. We'll just go ahead and move it up a little. There we go. I think you can see that. Nice big boy. Super nice horse. Do that like that. I gotta find my brushes. Him stay clean, that's for sure. I need to wash it, but it's been so cold here. Hi, bud. Hi, bud. Oh, that blanket's rubbing you, isn't it? Yeah. He's not 16 hands. 15-3. I guess if you go up an inch, maybe something like that. He's got such great color. So this is one of those guys that's handsome is as handsome does because 
He's pretty handsome to look at. Not like in a thoroughbred handsome kind of way, but in a hunt horse handsome kind of way. Hi, buddy. Yeah, does that feel good? Does that feel really good to get that on you? Not even dirty. Then good. There's pretty thick old skin. Flies in the summertime don't seem to bother them much. It's cold. Hands are freezing. It's gonna ride. Might still do that. Take him out western or something. See that? He picks it right up. No, nothing here. No. wrestling over there so you'll hear some growling we don't have any dinosaurs here just a bunch of puppies let's make sure you can y'all can see that I think you can bear look at you drugs. He's, like I said, I just brought him in. He hasn't been fooled with except for just getting his grain. We need to trim these up. They're getting a little long. Uh, it's been too cold to fool with them. So this is over a week maybe. I mean, not fooling with him or a week. I don't know. Something like that. But he's pretty much the same guy all day long, every day, regardless if you ride him or not. And uh, his riding's the exact same way. Just a good old gentle giant. Yeah. There you go, good boy. No. Year I had a case of thrush, which was, we had so much rain. Uh, and it kind of turned our paddocks into just like a yucky place. Didn't want to turn them out into the big pastures because they would have torn those all to pieces. So I had a case of thrush and wiped that out within three days by using that cattle product named Tomorrow. And uh, I've even used that product. We've had some dog fights. Uh, my neighbor's pit bull got a hold of one of our dogs, our boxer dog. Uh, it's my cousin's dog got a hold of our boxer dog. And that pit bull, I mean, it hung on. So after we got the dogs removed from each other, the poor boxer had some holes in her from that pit bull's teeth. And I just the next day it swelled up pretty good even though I thought I got them clean. I put that tomorrow in there. It cleaned up that infection like overnight. It was amazing. It's an amazing product. As far as this tail, I do need to cut it because it's staying dirty and I just like that. Actually, I'm going to go get some scissors to see if I can find some. They might be in my trailer. Cut about that much off. His tail will go to the ground. I'm going to walk away for a few minutes. I'll be right back. You can see how he stands while I walk away.
pack all my scissors. I must have taken everything in the house. Because I can't find my scissors anywhere. Oh well. I do. I am going to turn this tail up. I use, uh, I don't know what it's called, but it's this thing where instead of pulling his tail, I actually, oh, it's a tail pull or something like that. It's just, it's in the house also with my clippers. It's a really neat piece of equipment, and I need to do this again, but he'll get those fly out things here. I just, like, it's like pulling, but it's not pulling. It makes him have a really nice lay of his tail, which then gives him a really nice um, look on his rump. So, you know, you can do about anything to him. I think the most important thing is, is that he's quiet. Me and the dogs are wrestling back there. All of his horse buddies are out, out in the pasture and he doesn't care. I've accidentally left him tied right here, left to go do something, forgot I had him in the barn, came back over two hours later, and he's still just standing there. Now, he's not dumb, like, standing there because he's so stupid. He's just uh, very trusting. On those hoofs, I've told her, most everybody, he had a really bad experience with hobbles. Um, but you can see, you know, I can pick his hoofs up, just, you know, I just tap them. Right here on the acorn, he lifts them. You can do all kinds of stuff with them. It's just something, there's, he feels trapped if you clamp them in your leg. So, when we're trimming them, you know, we just set them and trim them trim them up real good. When the farrier comes to do about every five or six weeks, probably more like six weeks, to do a really nice job on them, we do uh, give them Dormosedan. You know what? That's the farrier's secret. And again, you can see, loosen up. He, uh, if I had a rasp, I could just take this all down. Uh, great feet. again or come on hand him out. You can lift him out. Don't drop it on me. That's a good boy. If you want to move him around I just give him a little tap. I'm hoping you there. Here you go. Western today. I don't know. Might pause this camera for a little bit here. Uh, go get my English saddle, maybe. I, I ride both ways, English Western. Western's, Western's really me. Um, I'll just get my Western saddle and flop it up on him. You all can see how he saddles. He saddles the same way under English. Uh, thing I like about my western saddle is I can wear my uh, winter winter boots here to keep my toes warm not my toes nice and warm started riding. My dad was in the Air Force, so we traveled all the time. Didn't have an opportunity to own a horse. I used to pretend I was a horse when I was a kid. And any time my parents could take me someplace to ride a horse, they would. But we lived in Hawaii and for almost eight years, and there just wasn't much. There weren't any horses near us. Uh, when I lived in New Jersey, 
for a little while, a friend had a horse, and I used to go hang out with her all the time just to sit and stare at her horse. I never got to ride it much. So I became a rider in my early 20s. Uh, really became a rider. Worked at a barn in St. Louis called Valley Mount Ranch. Those people were always so good to me. I was a trail guide there. Learned so much from them. They were cattle people and traded some horses. I got to ride the ones they were trading out. Did uh, trail rides, guided trail rides, and uh, learned so much about horses. But that's where I started really learning to ride. And like I said, I started Western. Probably would have behooved me to start English, but if, when you're at a Western barn, there's maybe one English rider. And in Missouri at the time, I mean, Valley Mount Ranch was like the end all place to go. They had ropings on Friday and Saturday nights, uh, barrel racing and all that stuff, so I piddled in a bunch of that. Let me go get the saddle. Valley Mount, I bought a, had a Morgan, right, that's, I broke them myself, and then I bought a Alabama state champion, Tennessee walking horse, racking horse, that sucker was about crazy, but again, being at Valley Mount Ranch, I learned so much on how to start horses, so see that, he doesn't flinch or anything when you, all these big old saddles up on them and so you can imagine what a postage stamp English saddle he does nothing. Uh, then when I was in my 30s I met Dennis and he bought me my first thoroughbred and I couldn't ride it. I couldn't figure out why I couldn't ride it. Uh, played with him for a while with her. We still have her daughter. Learned to ride it, started fox hunting, did some flat racing for the steeplechase. Never did steeplechase jumping, that was a little too crazy. First time I went at opening meet, Shawnee Hounds, I thought he was trying to kill me. That was crazy. I was hunting with Merrimack, but I'd never done any of that big time. I'm talking six hours out, fox hunting. My mare fell in a creek and couldn't get her up. Took the saddle off of her, thought she was going to die. Started whacking her with a stick, hoping she'd get up. Freezing cold, finally she got up. She was fine. Came in from that meat in the dark, soaking wet. Uh, and I think it was with, I was hunting with Merrimack Valley. Got my colors there, got my colors at Shawnee. Last year I got my colors. I was so pleased to get my colors from the Mel's. We used to go down to Mel's a lot, fox hunt. But I bought a, Dennis bought me a, a horse named Relokite. Broke the track record at the mile on the turf in Kentucky. And that nice big old thoroughbred, 16-2, stunning white feet. He was like a freight train. I really learned to ride with that horse. And, the rest is history. But I've also learned why people like these draft horses. Because this is what you get right here. Can't beat it. Our first draft cross was a spotted draft, registered spotted draft. Her name was Cricket. Got her in Missouri. And uh, never did get to fox hunt her because we were trail riding and somebody bought her, bought her right out from under us, basically. Um, and then I've had several since then. I've had several thoroughbreds off the track. 
thoroughbreds that we retrained. Had several babies of her own. Uh, started all those. But this guy is, is probably the best horse I've ever had from an all-around perspective. I never get bored riding them. I can ride them. I hopped him over some three-foot coops at the mouth. He did just great. He even gave some horses some leads over those coops. Um, but I've been trying to teach him patience, uh, knowing that someday I was going to have to sell them. Been keeping them in second flight. Have ridden them in first flight with Tennessee Valley at Baker's Creek, and he can stay up. He certainly can stay up uh, with thoroughbreds. Doesn't jig. When the huntsman passes, you're on a tight trail. A lot of people will go forward and circle around and then follow the huntsman. We just back up, stand there, and let them, their head hunt, facing the trail. We might be standing in a bunch of briars, but he backs backs up huntsman and everybody goes by until we fix our spot and we go right in there. So I think you're getting a picture of how lovely he is. Um, I'm going to show you this dorsal stripe. It's He's pretty fascinating. Let's see this. Let me just pick this up. What do you think, Donnie? Am I going to scare you with this thing? I hope not. There he is. Hi, handsome. Hi, buddy. Hi, fella. Man, I think you're handsome. Yeah, you are. You got two of those pretty blue eyes. They're not creepy blues. They're real pretty. Um, there's this paint spot. You can in the summertime you can see a zebra striping or a primitive striping on it's on all of his legs. And then of course he's got red tipped ears, but uh, this dorsal stripe is beyond beautiful. It's very dominant. Um, I've never had this camera next to him, by the way. So this is I'm just trying to be careful. And then way up top, I don't know if you can see it, I'm trying to see his red tipped ears. Our barn's not a big old fancy barn. We keep uh, 150, 160 round bells in here in the winter time. Our horses stay out. We have uh, we keep them in if we're you know need them in for whatever reason for stalls. But uh, down there you can I'll see if I can zoom in. You can see a uh, ride down there go down there all the time by myself, go, go in the 90 acres next door, go across the street, there's 200 acres, go down the road, ridden down the road to that mountain that you see right there, we call that No Business Ridge, it's loaded with coyote and bobcat and fox and deer and everything else. Oh, that's the Holsteiner, she's giving me stink eye. Uh, but it started all of my training like right there. We use uh, a round pin to start them. I don't know if you can see that. Brought that from Illinois. Gunny can jump about any of these low level beginner novice jumps. If you can see that log out there, that comes in off of a big hill. You thump up, and then that one's probably about 2 6. It goes right over the top of that. There's several chase type jumps down there that he goes over. I've not taken him over the four foot wide, two foot, eleven, three foot um, jumps. That, those are just the scope on those is just a little big, but I've taken him over the smaller uh, produce stands and those sort of things. So this is it. So I'll uh, I'm gonna go change and then I'll try and film us heading off and maybe that'll make a difference. Thank you for watching.